This is the day that Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. This is the day that Christ gathered his disciples in the upper room. This is the day that Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. This is the day that Christ our God gave us a holy feast, that we who eat the bread and drink the cup may proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection, and at the last day may reign with him in heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has left to us a meal of bread and wine, in which we share his body and his blood. May we, who remember this sign of his great love, show in our lives the fruits of his redemption. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one, the lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your stuff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I now hope the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How oh, shall I repay the Lord? For all the good things he has done for me. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. 
in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Great God, your love has called us here as we find love for our way. Your living light is still here, though heart is hard, it is okay. We come with
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your, your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are masters greater than the one who sent them. For if you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last year, at this time, we were a few weeks into the COVID-19 pandemic, and the shock of being unable to gather for the services of Holy Week was something very fresh in our experience. 
Since then, the public health situation and the levels of precautions designed to address it have fluctuated many times, and we find ourselves now on the verge of another serious and deeply disturbing phase of the crisis. Our inability to celebrate the institution of the Eucharist and to remember in symbolic action Jesus' washing of his disciples' feet is still a sharp loss, but tonight I do not want to dwell on that loss. The pandemic, overwhelming as it has often been, and will inevitably be for some time to come, is not the whole of our spiritual experience. And so I want to reflect for a few moments on the broader implications of the gospel we have just heard, although some of the resonances of our current situation are there also. If you knew that you were going to die tomorrow, how would you choose to spend the intervening time? We've heard a lot from John's Gospel lately, and it is one of the one of the four in which Jesus appears most certain of his divine identity, most sure about what is going to happen to him. But in all four accounts of the Passion, it seems clear that by the time Jesus and his disciples gathered in the upper room, whether it was for a Passover meal or for the supper on the night before the killing of the Passover lambs, he did know what would follow. He had put himself beyond the protection of whatever restraint it was that had held the hand of the authorities until then, either by disrupting the commerce of the temple court, as in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, or in John, by raising Lazarus from the dead. And the disciples, not sharing his knowledge, however much he had tried to prepare them, must have been confused and apprehensive. This broken, sinful, uncomprehending, desperately hopeful little group, wearied and disoriented by the rapid passage of events, must have been nearly at breaking point. One of them would break, and Jesus knew it. And he chose to spend his time with his friends, to offer them the signs, the gestures, the words, which would make sense to them only later. Two great signs and a single great commandment. Three Gospels describe the institution of the Eucharist and one, the ritual of foot washing, but I think we often make too much of this distinction. Christian imagination has aligned them as events in a single story, and the impulse to do this is a faithful and holy one, not to be contraindicated or deconstructed by biblical scholarship. Jesus uses the language of act to reveal the meaning of what he will do on the next day. His disciples will remember the look on his face, the actions of his hands, the taste of that bread and that wine, and his touch on their rough and filthy feet long after his exact words have faded from their minds. And what he shows them is breaking and outpouring, taking off his upper garment putting on a towel and offering them the service that not even every slave could be compelled to give, he breaks forever the expectation that he had come to be exalted to any kind of earthly glory. The one who had announced himself as the water of life, awakening for those in the know all sorts of images of the coming of the Messiah and the gushing of living water out of the temple of the new Jerusalem now pours out his dignity and his honor to tend to the inescapably physical dirt and weariness of his ramshackle band of followers. Modern minds retreat in panic from the intimacy of the gesture, but 
in the moment, it would have been the self-abnegation of Jesus, which was the most terrifying thing for the disciples to witness. Perhaps this was what decided Judas finally to go through with the undertaking he had made with the temple authorities. All that work, all that good, solid teaching about the kingdom of God coming to nothing but a bowl of filthy water to be thrown into the street. Or perhaps he was still there to hear the words, this is my body, this is my blood. More signs of messianic promise being broken and squandered right in front of him, leaving only crumbs on the table and an alcoholic haze in the eyes of his companions. Judas makes a desperately human mistake. Fearing the worst outcome of his hopes and dreams, he sets about doing the one thing guaranteed to bring about that outcome. Or rather, that is what his actions would mean if the love and mercy of God were not vastly greater than human sin and mortality. This struggle of Jesus plays itself out in all of us whenever the world's standards lead us to question the implications of our faith in Christ, whenever we hear or think we hear ourselves being called to wealth and success, or at least to blameless and quietly prosperous respectability, or when we are drawn by subtler seductions ambition for the recognition of our prophetic witness and the beauty of our conspicuous holiness. But these are not our commandments, not even the ones that have the flavor of piety. The commandment which jumps out of the final discourses of Jesus, like a searchlight pursuing an escaped prisoner, is really blindingly simple. Love one another as I have loved you. Terrifyingly simple, too, because it has nothing to do with warmth or feeling or sentiment or affection, and everything to do with breaking and outpouring. Learn to be broken and poured out for one another, as I have been broken and poured out for you. To the disciples, frightened and ignorant of what was to come, this was more than they could endure, despite their promises and protestations. One betrayed, one denied, all ran away. Even for us, who know how the story goes on, who celebrate year by year, week by week, even day by day, the Lord's rising, it is simply too daunting. Its light searches out in all of us the small and large ways in which we betray, deny, and flee, and reveals what is often the best faithfulness we can manage. Stand mute and helpless at the foot of the cross to tend, to wrap, to bury, and to wait. This new commandment to sacrificial love is not given on its own, but as part of the unfolding of the new life in Christ to which we are all called, the invitation which is never withdrawn, and the sustenance which is never taken away. By becoming participants in and witnesses of the signs of God's unending and inexhaustible love in Christ, the washing of our keenest shames and regrets, and the feeding of our deepest longings, we are implicated in that love as it works in us and through us to bring forgiveness and redemption not only to us, but to the world God loves. We are also implicated in the consequences of that love. Tonight, we watch and wait, as the disciples watched in the garden. We may find ourselves wrestling in the silence of that vigil with what God really wants of us in this life. Tomorrow, we will hear again the passion 
and remember that we are buried with Christ in his death. And we will live with that knowledge through the vast emptiness of Holy Saturday until we arrive at the kindling of the new fire, the light springing out of darkness, the joy and glory of Christ risen. And know again that gift of eternal life, which is the fullness of divine love and the fullness of being for which all of us were created. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. And while we cannot now follow his example, I may still recall whose servant I am, and all you who share in the royal priesthood of Christ may remember his admonition that what he did for you is also to be done by you for others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them.
Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And so we gather as the household of God, apostles, prophets, martyrs, servants, to pray for the church and for all humankind, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For refugees, the homeless, the abused, for all who have nowhere to lay their head, we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all of us, unable to eat at the Lord's table or at any other table, we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Diocese of Bath and Wells of the Church of England, our companion Diocese of Grahamstown, South Africa, the whole body of Church of Christ, fractured in a world of violence, war and distrust, remembering particularly the people of Myanmar and the citizens of Hong Kong. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who betray and for those whom they betray, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all in need of prayer, especially our community, our province, our country, and the world, as we grapple with the brutal impact that COVID-19 has, has put on us, those infected, those who have lost their jobs, those who provide care, both paid and unpaid. We pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For ourselves, for the Reverend Andrea, the Reverend Carol, our bishops, Kevin, Andrew, Anne and Linda, as we gather in virtual communion to celebrate the Lord's Passover. We pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have died this day and are dying, and all who mourn, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we recall the wonders you worked for our ancestors. We marvel at the love shown us by your Son, who set us the example to wash one another's feet as he has done for us. Grant us grace never to show fall short of the goal. Grant us strength to journey for at least one hour tonight. Hear us as we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress. O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One. Enthroned upon the praises of Israel, our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. And there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of patience surround me. They open wide their jaws at me. Like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax, my mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet, I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. Be 
you are my strength, hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. My wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They, they shall come and make known to a people yet unborn. The saving deeds that he has done. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my gold.